G'day, my name is Greg. I'm an Australian CNC hobbyist. I've made a few YouTube videos about how and why I use Vetric software to produce G-code for my plasma cutter table. And I have quite a few people asking me, can I please provide my post processor for the Vetric software for plasma use? And I have to politely decline. My post processor is written specifically for my controller and application and it won't work for someone else um, so it's no good passing it on so what I've decided to do is to go through and write or edit a very generic plasma post processor for Mac 3 which is a very common still controller in the plasma world um, and it needs to be stressed that I am no way affiliated with Vectric software. This is just one Vectric user talking to other Vectric users about um, adapting Vectric software for plasma use. Okay, well with that out of the way, um, if you're not particularly interested in a post processor, uh, thanks for coming along and you probably should jump out now. This will get a little boring. But if you're interested, hang around. Okay, now here I am in Cut2D. The very first thing is I'm going to go up to the help menu and open the post processor guide. I very strongly suggest if you're interested that you look at this. Uh, you don't have to read every line but um, there's a lot of information there. Um, very comprehensive on uh, editing the uh, post processors and what each command or variable or whatever means. So I strongly recommend that one. Okay, now when I want to um, begin to with a new post processor, what I do is I just go and grab an appropriate old one first. So I've been up to file, gone to the um, um, what do you call it, um, the application data folder, um, and I'm going into post processors. I'm going to scroll down here to if I can find it. LM Mark 23 arcs millimeter. Now I'm going to open that, but I'm going to open it in Notepad. I always use Notepad++, but not everyone has that. So just to keep it simple, everyone has Notepad who's on Windows. So I'm going to open it in Notepad, which is just a very basic text editor. Okay, and here it is. Now the very first thing I need to do is go up here and save as and this will create a copy and not overwrite the original post processor but just uh, make a new copy now I'm going to call it Mac 3 Plasma 1.6 why I do that will become clear a little later on but that's what I'm going to name it and I'm going to save that okay so now I'm going to um, zoom in a bit to make it a bit easier to read on the YouTube um, and there's a lot of stuff here that um, at least to my way of thinking is, is just a bit over the top now anything after a plus character is a comment and does not affect the post processor at all it just is for a human reader to uh, have some more understanding so none of this is essential but I would probably just get rid of all of this um, and I might, if I wanted to, I could call this uh, 21 uh, 05 15, which is the date today. We have it round the other way to what the Americans do, but uh, that's, the, that's how we write the date. Uh, written for metric. I'll just leave that at that. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, and this doesn't matter either but I don't know anyone who uses Mac 2 okay now what is important really important is the post name uh, again I'm going to get rid of uh, Mac 3 I'm going to call this plasma whoop SMA uh, and I'm going to call it 1.6 um, I don't need that to be there I, I know it's what sort of a file it is now file extension um, the standard here is text you can have uh, tap 
you can have uh, MC, um, whatever floats your boat. I usually use text as a file extension. Now I'm working in millimetres as was does most of the world. If you work in inches you'll have inch here. Uh, direct output is applicable to Mac 3. Uh, it allows uh, the software to send the created G code directly to Mac 3 if it's running in the background. Um, I've, I always found that when I was using Mac 3, which I did for many years, uh, as a very handy feature. Um, my present controller, UCCNC, doesn't have it and I kind of miss it, but no big deal. Um, line endings, yes, we need that. Now, again, personal preference. I hate line numbers. You probably don't. You probably love them. That's fine. You don't have to do this. But I... I just want my code to be clear and easy and uncluttered to read as possible. And line numbers add nothing to that, they just take away from it. In my opinion, your opinion may vary. You don't need to do that, I just do that. Okay, now variables. Um, line number, well, I don't care about that anymore. Spindle speed, that probably doesn't matter. Um, I guess none of those things really matter. Uh, they can all be left there. Um, dwell time is to do with uh, peck drilling and stuff like that. I don't care about that. Um, I actually never use safe Z hide anyway, but anyway, that's okay. So we get then we move down to the header. Now, to me, this is just all guff. But that's 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 again that's just a personal opinion. I create my G code when I'm standing at the machine. I don't create it in the office and then take my little, put it on a uh, thumb drive and drive down to the factory and load it onto the machine and then get there and think, oh, I should have changed such and such. I'll just have to drive back to the office and uh, change that. I do everything at the computer. So I don't need, all this stuff is a bit superfluous to me. Uh, you can get rid of it or you can leave it whatever you want. Um, G21 and G71 are both the same thing. They're telling uh, Vectric software to output that as metric. If it was G20 and G70, it would be output as inches. Um, what I do want to get rid of is this line which is a, uh, a tool offset. I, it probably won't matter, but I don't want anything happening that I'm not aware of or didn't want to happen, so I'm just going to get rid of that one. And one that we definitely need to get rid of is this line, which tells the spindle to turn on, or in our case, for the plasma to start firing, and we don't want that now. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, G94, yep, all the rest of that's okay. Now, again, I hate line numbers, but um, I'm just going to pause the video while I go through and uh, get rid of all these. You don't need to do this. I just, they annoy me. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've done that. Um, now, what I do need to move or want to remove is every reference to the z-axis. So in rapid move, in uh, first feed move, in feed move, uh, no z axis in there, no z axis there, no z reference there, no z reference there. Okay, now we move down to helical arc moves, and these are not needed in um, plasma. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll right out so that I can see a bit more. And I'm just going to grab those and delete them. Okay. Um, now having deleted all of those sections, I'm also going to delete new segment. Again, you don't necessarily need to do this, but it's not required uh, as far as I'm concerned. And also dwell moves are not required. Um, that's to do with peck drilling, and we're not doing that. 
okay but now we need to add something and uh, I need to add a couple of sections here now instead of typing them all out what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and go to my data application folder again post processes I'm going to scroll down and find one called Bernie which happens to have the section that I want and I'm going to start that in uh, open with notepad I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to grab this section here and control C for copy and then I'm just going to close that again and get that out of the way bring back my and I'm going to add in here control V I'm just going to copy that section in here uh, plunge move and retract move now a little bit of a typo here that uh, Vectric have made that should read plunge as I said before anything after a plus sign is just a comment so it doesn't really matter it just makes it easier for humans to read now we've brought in the right format but we haven't brought in the right code so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab from over on the side where I have it uh, already written I'm just going to grab something and paste in here and then we'll go through and uh, go through each section okay plunge move what's going on here well this is at the beginning of every cut and this is when we need to do what's called a touch off and um, raise to pierce height start the torch pierce delay and then move to cut height and that's what's going on here G31 is a straight probe move Z minus 50 is the direction F800 is the speed that that's going to happen pretty straightforward you can put in what numbers here that you need uh, now when we do this uh, with a floating head there's usually a bit of uh, offset or override of the z-axis before the um, floating head switch activates the probe input uh, so we need to compensate for that so we go G92 Z minus 1.5 now this value here of course uh, will need to suit your machine then we G0 Z2 this is just bringing the torch up to pierce height ready to go um, now this number um, will obviously uh, need to suit the material and we'll talk about that a little later M3 start the torch press the button press the handle uh, the button on the handle whatever the trigger um, G4 P01 is a delay for pierce um, now for 1.6 millimeter uh, that's about what I need uh, 0.1 of a second um, in the uh, Mark 3 configuration there's a setting to choose whether delays are in seconds or in milliseconds um, if yours is set in milliseconds or if this was set in milliseconds and I needed this to be 0.1 of a second I would put uh, 100 milliseconds but um, it's not it's in uh, um, seconds so I go that and then immediately after the delay uh, G0 Z 1.6 which brings the torch down to cut height and immediately after that it starts its move around the uh, cut profile then at the end of the cut we come to this section M5 turns the torch off stops the arc G0 Z30 uh, just lifts the torch to a height um, actually I usually make that 10 but um, you can make it whatever you like uh, a, a height that you find suitable um, to clear and move on to the next cut and then we have the footer happens at the end of the code um, G0 Z30 um, I just move the torch up to 30 millimeters above the material I find suitable for the end of the cut uh, G0 XH YH these are picking up values set in 
um, cut 2D uh, for the X home and Y home position. Um, generally I have it at 0 and 0 but you know you can have it wherever it suits you. M30 simply means the code's over, rewind. And that's about it. And that brings me to my last uh, point about this uh, post processor and that is right back at the beginning here why did I call it Mac 3 Plasma 1.6 millimeter uh, and basically the reason is because the pierce height and pierce delay suit that thickness of material but what if we were to say cut 10 millimeter steel what would change what would be different uh, there'd be the amperage in the plasma and maybe even the psi but that's beyond the scope of uh, this controller um, one thing that would definitely change would be the feed rate or cut speed and to a lesser degree maybe even the kerf width but both of those things, cut speed and kerf width, are controlled from within Cut2D when we select or set up our tool. So that leaves us with pierce height and pierce delay. So what might be pierce delay for say 10mm steel? Well I'm guessing, I'd need to look it up, but I'm guessing say 6mm and pierce delay I'm guessing again but say 1.2 millimeters now having done that if I go back up to the top and call this 10 millimeter and then go up and save as Mac 3 plasma 10 millimeters um, I've already done that but that's okay um, now we have two post processors in our list to choose from one for 1.6 millimeter steel and one for 10 millimeter steel now it would be quite a trivial matter to go through and alter those couple of things for different uh, thicknesses of material that we might want to cut and saving out post processors to suit and that's the best way that I can think of to um, handle that limitation um, of pierce height and pierce delay. What we don't want to do of course is have to go into our g-code after it's created and go through and edit it and change those things that would be a pain we don't want to do that so this is one way that we could uh, we could have a post processor for each thickness of material in my particular post processor with the one that I use with the software that I use uh, I don't need to do that I I have here in this section I have some macros and custom macros and custom fields in my control software that uh, take care of that and I don't need to do that but in Mac 3 this is the best way that I can think of to handle different thicknesses or different materials okay well that brings us to an end um, if you've lasted this long uh, I hope it's been helpful to someone and thank you very much for watching <laughs>